I thought about what you said last week, and I've decided to go to my high school reunion. My face broke out. You think I'm regressing? I guess I should go to one of them before I die, huh? I loved Jim and history and lunch. I hated algebra. Maybe that's why I don't balance my checkbook. The whole time I was there, all I wanted to do was leave. And yet when it came time to graduate, I, I think I was afraid to go. You know, with graduation comes growing up and responsibility. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to take responsibility for. Have you ever been to a reunion? Yes. Well, what do you do at them? Not much. They can be pretty boring. Don't expect anything too profound. I really liked my friends then. I think I'm gonna... I don't know, I think I'm afraid we're all gonna be so different. Don't be so sure. What are you saying, we never change? Define change. Well, you know, I mean, what is biology destiny? I'm trying to change. Am I going to spend all this time and money in therapy and walk out of here the same old Rosie O'Neill I was in high school? Rosie. What? Do you know how many psychiatrists it takes to change a light bulb? What? Do you? No. How many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Only one. The light bulb has to want to change. Yeah. Living in time and feeling every moment. Do I walk into tomorrow and never? to build a fire in my home. Is that where you got this? Yeah, in my house, it's a man's job. We build the fires and we get the splint. Ow! Sorry. Anyway, the point is he didn't mean to burn the house down. What? It was self-defense. You're gonna argue that? I have a good shot at it. Oh. No, it's okay, Rosie. I appreciate it. Anyway, my client has been threatened several times. He testified against two drug dealers, and now they're out and they're trying to get back at him. How are they doing that? Oh, they riddled his house with a couple of Uzis, and one of the bullets wounded his kid. Any witnesses? No. Well, that's I... inadmissible. What else have you got, Rosie? Well, I didn't say that nobody saw it, Ben. I was about to say that nobody wants to say they saw it. It's the same thing. You gotta show imminent threat to his person or a third party. I got a 98 in Crim Pro, okay, Ben? Rosie, where is the immediate threat or the imminent danger, huh? Two days after the shooting, my client is sitting in his living room minding his own business, and he hears something. So he looks out the window, 
and there's one of the drug dealers lighting a Molotov cocktail. So he goes and dials 911 and then watches this guy hurl it at his front door. Fortunately, it didn't break. So now my client is crazed. He goes outside, he picks up the Molotov, and he runs after the guy. But the drug dealer, of course, runs to his house, shuts the door, and bolts it. And my client takes the cocktail, and he throws it after him, and set his house on fire. It's a nice neighborhood. Well, it used to be until the crack dealers moved in. Ben, my client scrubbed toilets for two years, trying to save up enough money to get his family out of a one-room Skid Row apartment. He wanted a backyard for his kids. He is a decent man who loves his children. He thinks if we just tell the jury what happened, why, they'll just let him go. Well, maybe they will. Oh, please. Rosie, some wacko just called for you. A female or a male wacko? Female. She said, Raggedy Ann has landed. She'll meet you in the Biltmore Bar at 6 o'clock. <laughs> Rosie! Raggedy Ann! are the only reason I'm here. Oh, look at you. You are so skinny. No. I hate you. I have been drinking bad milkshakes for weeks just so I could show my face at the reunion. Oh, Judith, and you look beautiful. Why didn't you tell me you were coming in? I wanted to surprise you. Oh, waiter. Anyway, I am opening a franchise here in L.A. Yeah? And I figured, what the hell? That's a chance to get out of Waco and relive my past. All right. I want you to try our new cranberry nut muffins. The number one muffin in Texas. Right. Don't forget about me. I want to know about you and Patrick. Um, the one-time couple of the 80s. Yeah. Well, we're divorced. Honey, you wrote that. I want to know what happened. Sometimes things just don't work out. Rosie, I have known you since we went to Browning Camp in the fourth grade. You can't tell me things don't work out. I want the deets. He dumped me for a younger woman. Sorry. Hey, you know what happens. I understand not another word. Thanks. Did you get a good settlement? <laughs> Judith Ann, would you stop it? Look, I brought my friendship bracelet. Oh, <laughs> no. Look at this. Rosie O'Neill, 1964. It sure is. <laughs> it's so good to see you. You too. It's so nice that we can all get together again. Yeah. So who else is coming to this thing? Let's see, uh, Madeline and Toby are here. Madeline is a full professor at Barnard, <gasps> and Toby's living in Massachusetts, has her own business. Design and jewelry. Whoa! So is Vicky coming? Her secretary said she'd be here if she didn't have to rehearse. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Did you read about her latest divorce in newspapers? Mm-hmm. Pretty ugly, huh? Mm-hmm. Anybody. Guess you didn't have to rehearse. I may throw up. Only if you promise to hit her shoes. Oh, Victoria. Lumpy, how are you? Just fine. Victoria, how are you? Exhausted, enervated. I am one drain diva, darling. I mean, here I am killing myself for a couple of two-bit has-been greedy producers. I've got the entire show resting on my overtaxed, talented shoulders. And do I get any thanks for it? My God, I can't even get a drink. But that's life in the theater. Judith Ann, you look exactly as I expected you would. How kind of you to say so. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have with us the star of Broadway, Miss Vicki Lindman. Oh, dear. Well, let's give her a round of applause, and maybe she'll honor us with a song. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, stop it. I loathe this, but it comes with the territory. Forgive. That's not her hair, and I'm none too sure about the rest of it. I, 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 I simply can't, but I'd love you all for caring. Oh, please, sing something from your show. Please, Miss Lynn. Let's show her how much we adore her. Let's hear it. <laughs> Where did she get that accent? From her last husband. Oh, darling, I'd love to, but 
I must save my voice for my show, but I am sure that my dear, charming, very talented and very handsome young friend here can sing much better than I. Now, what is your name, dear? Uh, it's John, Miss Lindman. Oh, John, I adore that name in a man. Now, would you sing something of mine for me? I would, I would love it. Really, I would. <laughs> Help him out, Tom. I don't care, I don't care what they may think of me. I'm happy, go lucky, they say that I'm plucky, contented, and carefree. Never give it I away, girls. Care, now, tell me what you two have been up to for the last quarter of a century. I'm in muffins. I'm a lawyer, a public defender for the county of Los Angeles. Ah, the public. I'm here on a pre-Broadway tour of a new musical. It's a piece of crap, but I make it work somehow. I am the reason that it hasn't folded yet. Oh, so you're performing here in town. Uh, why don't you bring your husband? I'd love to meet him. I'm not married anymore. Bring your boyfriend, if you have one. Oh, I think I'll wait and see your Broadway run. If you have one. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies. It's going to be a bumpy reunion. We can tell the jury what you told me, but we'd have a much better chance of convincing them that you acted in self-defense if there were some neighbors who saw what happened that night. There were. They stood in the street and watched the crack house burn. They slapped me on the back and told me what a good man I was. But when the police showed up, they disappeared. Have any of them contacted you here in jail? No. Not even for cigarettes or money, candy, anything? No. Has anyone offered to help you make bail? Jesse, isn't there anyone who'll come forward? Maybe they're waiting for an invitation. I'm sorry, but uh, I didn't see anything. You didn't hear anything either? I had the TV. You can't hear a gunshot, but you can hear a boy collapse on your front porch. I'm sorry the boy got hurt. How about the night that Jesse was arrested, the night the house burned down? Did you see or hear anything that night? No. Mr. Lippman, look, I can't get anybody who's willing to testify. I need to prove that Jesse Abadi was driven to do something out of desperation because he feared for his life and the life of his family. I need you to tell the court what it's been like here. You want me to say they deal drugs under our noses? They do. You want me to say they have, they have guns? They do. That they shoot people? They do. They shoot children. You want me to say that in court? I can't. I've lived here for the past 30 years. It's all I got. I don't want to lose it. Looks like you already have, Mr. Lippman. You've been arrested, what, four times now for selling drugs, is that right? Objection, immaterial. Sustained. Mr. Reeves, what do you do for a living? I'm, uh, between jobs right now. Well, the rent on the house you were living in was $1,200 a month. How did you pay that? I had some money saved. Mr. Reeves, shortly after you moved in, you installed a solid steel door in the front entrance and boarded every window with plywood. Is that right? I did it for my own personal security. You see, I live in a real dangerous neighborhood. Oh, so nobody could see in. But then again, you couldn't see out, could you? That's right. Well, then how could you possibly have seen my client set fire to the property? I know he did it. Everybody knows he did it. That fool could have killed me. Move to strike, Your Honor, non-responsive. This man shot my son! His drugs are killing our children! What is the matter with you people? Sit down. But he is the one who's on trial! What kind of country 
is this? If you don't sit down right now, I'm going to have you removed from yes, the court. there are rats in the field. You have to burn them This up. is my last warning. Nobody sit to... down. That's it. Get Take them out. Say. This court will no, reconvene on Monday morning at 10 a.m. How you feeling? Fine. Good, good, good. You look great. Really? Thanks. You're welcome. Look, uh, <clears throat> Rosie, would you mind taking my Miranda day? I'll owe you one. Make that two. <laughs> you could make it a hundred. I can't do it. I'm going to my 25th high school reunion. A little late, isn't it? Well, it took him a while to get us all together. Oh. Yeah, I went to my last reunion. Everybody was very drunk. People said things that really hurt. It was a, a lot of old wounds that got opened up. I got into a fist fight, and my wife told me she wanted a divorce. Yeah, yeah. It was a night to remember. <laughs> God, Rosie, I can't believe it's you. I mean, back in high school, you were really like... A porker. <laughs> Whoa! You were captain of the diving team, glee club, honor society, and sophomore class president? Yeah. You were really popular. I mean, like the whole school signed your yearbook. Doesn't matter, Kimmer. All they remember is a 17-year-old klutz with thunder thighs. Yeah, but that's not who you are now. Man, Rosie, if I was you, I couldn't wait to get there tonight and show everybody how great I look. There's a part of me that's looking forward to it. There's another part that isn't. You never get over high school. Those feelings of total inadequacy stay with you forever. Anyway, what do you think of this one? Are any guys gonna be there? It was an all-girls school. Yeah, then that one's okay. Hey! You went to school with Vicki Lindman? How do you know her? Broadway musicals aren't exactly your cup of tea. Ah, well, Bridget thinks she's a big deal. She's got all those show albums. Do you ever listen to them? Not on purpose. See, Bridget puts them on while she does her aerobics. Oh. So what was Vicky like back then? Loud, pushy, and told everybody she was going to be the next Barbara Streisand. Who? Let me put it this way, Kimmer. Vicky wanted to be a star, like Madonna. Oh. So were you guys friends? Until we stopped talking. Why would happen? You know, I don't remember. <laughs> there you go, Rosie. And don't forget, the class picture's at 10 o'clock. Oh, thanks, Joni. Here's a couple of my cars. Huh. If either of you girls are ever in the market for a house, let me know. Oh, great. Thank you. Wasn't she a year ahead of us? Oh, she comes to all the reunions to give out her business card. She's in the Million Dollar Club. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Is that Ann Topolewski? She's so fat. <laughs> Rosie? Yeah? Oh, you look fabulous. Hi. Lynn. Lombardi. We were on the swim team together. I was breast, you were butterfly, remember? Of course. <laughs> so, Lynn, what have you been up to since graduation? <laughs> uh, well, I married Paul Wilner. Oh, you remember Paul? He was a young leader for St. Mark's. Oh. Yeah, anyway, we just uh, just moved to Palace Verdes. Oh, well, that's great. Oh, we love it there. Oh, oh and picture time! Oh! <laughs> You gotta see this. This is Ashley. Isn't she adorable? Oh, it's just like a father. Oh, it's just like a oh, golly, golly, golly. <laughs> uh, Lynn, could you excuse me for just a second? Oh, uh, sure. It's nice to see you. Oh, thanks. Good yeah. to see you. Uh, I have a martini, please. Thank you. Nancy? Nancy Butler? Oh, hello, Rose. <laughs> How Hi. are you? Well, I'm surviving. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. I wasn't really sure I wanted to come tonight. I feel the same way. I guess my curiosity got the better of me. You never know how people are going to turn out. I guess not. <laughs> I remember you always sitting in your room listening to Dominique and talking about how you wanted to be a nun. Yeah. Thanks. So, 
What are you up to, Nance? I'm a nun. Oh! Oh, great! Great! Victoria, I didn't think you did that. Pure champagne, darling. Black really is a slimming color, Lottie. So I noticed. You know, Victoria, I haven't been called lumpy in 25 years. Why don't you try Rosie? You know I left Victoria back in high school. Why don't you try Vicky? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit since our first day together in the second grade. Well, considering the source, I will take that as a compliment. When I ran for sophomore class president, you ran for sophomore class president. <laughs> oh, Victoria, I only ran because they asked me to. Oh, lumpy. You only ran because I was running. Well, I won. And I tried out for the diving team. You tried out for the diving team. I tried out for the diving team because I did a perfect half gainer. You tried out for the diving team because you wanted to show Mr. Craig that you had boobs. Well, at least I had them. See how competitive you are? I am not competitive. Huh. Oh, I, I get it. I can't believe this. You're still fuming because I went to the senior prom with Ricky Tigerman. You were my best friend and you stabbed me in the back. I didn't hear a thing. I said I was sorry about that 25 years ago. And if it makes you feel any better, he got so drunk that night he puked all over the limousine. It was always so easy for you. You had broken up with him. Yeah, the day before. Well, the two of you had nothing in common. Yeah, we did. We both thought you'd die a virgin. If you'd had any guts, you would have told me to my face. But oh no, I had to hear it from Lynn Lombardi. Rosie O'Neill, get your butt in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, it's good to see you. Good to see nice you. to see you. You look you, great. I was just going to say that to you. <laughs> this is one. Ah, ah, Toby, ah, I can't ah, believe it. It's so good to see you. Oh, thank you. You look so thin. Oh, I wish. Oh, God. <laughs> is this weird? <laughs> this is weird. This is weird. <laughs> What a great room. Hey, you only have your 25th one? Yeah, <laughs> nothing but the best for our game. Yeah, that's right. What took you so long to get up here? Oh, I had a near fatal encounter with Vicky in the ladies, and I use the term loosely. Uh, is she still as big a bitch as ever? Bigger. Hey, I think she's funny. Huh? Funny? Funny if you like a Mack truck in heels. So, so Rosie, uh, this is your first reunion. What do you think? I think everybody looks like their mothers. <laughs> Have you looked in the mirror lately? I'm so depressed. <laughs> Quarter of a century, things change. Things fall. Unless you lift them. <laughs> <laughs> so you make jewelry? Hey, a girl has to make a living. Honey, did you see Liza Bennington? She's had so much plastic surgery, her face is one big smile from ear to ear. Toby, I hope you got my ice cream. Oh, listen, ladies, I got to get out of these pantyhose. Oh, Toby, you got anything to drink up here? Let me see. Zombies, anyone? <laughs> hey! Me? Well, all right, look. When I look back, I guess I had it all. I had a husband, kids, a career, a nervous breakdown. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I, I always thought when I grew up, I was going to be Laura Petri. You know, have a kid, a nice house in the suburbs, dancing in your living room in capri pants. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke coming home from work every night. Yes. <laughs> Nothing's changed. I still spend every day trying to convince a room full of co-eds that the women's movement didn't end in lean cuisines and Sandra Day O'Connor. <laughs> it's a losing battle. Where's Simone de Beauvoir when you need her? 
dead. <laughs> oh, I was so ticked when I found out she was such a wuss. So she had a few domestic problems. She wrote the greatest book on feminism ever written. Doesn't it scare any of you that this country is moving backwards? The ERA didn't pass. Women still earn 62 cents for every dollar a man makes. Only 5% of the people in Congress are women. And nobody under the age of 35 seems to give a damn. Lighten up, Madeline. We're supposed to be having a good time. I am having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What I really want to know is, have any of you ever had anyone do the ice trick on you? The ice trick? Yeah, the ice trick. You know, that's when a man... Toby, shame on you. Joni Sander told me I'd find you up here. I have trudged over every inch of this third red flea bag, uh, looking just for you. Oh, sorry. Am I interrupting something? Uh, that's okay, Vicky. We're just looking at the yearbook. Come on, sit down. I can't stay. I have to be up at the slit of dawn for a session with my private trainer. He's an ex-Marine drill sergeant, a total Nazi. But he says I'm in better shape than women a third my age. How about a sugarless peanut butter and carob chip muffin? Poor Sally Bramer. Half her life in braces when what she really needed was a chin job. Whatever happened to Heidi Hoberman with all that dreadful stringy hair? Remember her? Who could forget her? She was the only one to lose her virginity in high school. No, she wasn't. <gasps> Lie. You lied? You said that Buddy only got to second base. So call me the master of understatement. I always liked Heidi. She was so daring. She plugged up all the toilets with sanitary napkins to protest the Vietnam War. That's right, she did. Oh, uh, what, what was that slogan she spray painted on the wall of the gym? Um. Die, fascist pigs. No, that was on the administration building. Oh, that's right. It was, um, wait, wait. Uh, uh, don't flush the, the youth, youth of, of our, our generation, generation down, down the cesspool of Southeast, Southeast Asia. Asia. Whoa! <laughs> Heidi Hoberman. Whoa, whatever <laughs> happened to her? I haven't thought about her in years. Isn't she a documentary filmmaker? Not anymore. She died six months ago. What happened? Breast cancer. I went to her funeral. Her locker was next to mine. OK, so she's dead. Let her rip, dears. Well, I don't want to spend the rest of the evening staging some memorial service. I thought she was one of your best friends. She was, but that was eons ago. I don't want to talk about that now. Why not? That's part of what a reunion is about. I don't need to be reminded how mortal I am. What does that mean? That I know I'm going to die. If my show flops, I'll die right here in L.A. Heaven for Finn. And God, at least let me die on Broadway. Believe me, dears, once you pass 40, they start counting your birthdays in dog years. Well, face it, you're a bunch of old broads. Speak for yourself, Victorian. When I look around this room, I don't see old broads. I see fine wine. Aged, most definitely. But better for it. You're here. Am I correct in assuming that Judith Ann is the only one here who's still married? Wake up. The wine has a bitter taste. Now raise your hands, kids. How many of your husbands left you for a younger woman? The narrow vision of a few unhappy men is not the issue here. Speaking for myself, I don't need to be married to a man who prefers a firm ass to laugh lines and intelligent conversation. There are only two men in the world who believe that. My therapist, who's paid to, and Phil Donahue, who's married. Come on, Toby. Are you coming? No. <laughs> <sighs> A toast to Heidi Hoberman. Oh, no. We're out of zombies. You're kidding. 
What time is it? Oh, my God, the bar closes in 15 minutes. Oh, my. oh, oh we gotta get out of here. Oh, I gotta get on my pantyhose. Go on, honey, I don't need pantyhose. I'm buying. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm drinking. Come on, move. Are we in a jumping van? All right, Toby, you sit here with us. Hard to believe, huh? 25 years ago, we were sitting in bleachers wearing those awful white umpire dresses oh, <laughs> that made us look like pregnant brides. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for Dr. Cox to give us our diplomas. As we march down that aisle to Toby's song. Hey, Toby, how'd that go? I don't know. It was a long time ago. Come oh, on. Oh, Toby, come on. There's a piano right over Please. there. Do oh, yeah. Yes. No. Oh. No. Please. Only if Vicky joins me. Well, I thought you had to run off and get your beauty sleep. Shut up, Judith Ann. Come on, Vicky. I need your help. You're the professional. Come on. Sorry, darling. I ain't in the mood. Living in time And feeling every moment Do I walk into tomorrow And never look behind In a perfect world Everyone's dreams would all come true You are one cold, inconsiderate, self-absorbed bitch. You ought to know, counselor. You're the expert. What is your problem? I told you I was sorry about Ricky Tigerman. What do you want me to do, penance? This is not about Ricky Tigerman. And you know it. It isn't always easy, but I gotta believe I'll make it through. What will the future hold? I wonder what will the future hold? How will it all unfold? I wish I neighbors attempt to buy the property from you didn't they in fact even make you an offer if you want to call it that the amount was much less than it's worth to me you mean you could make more money renting it to drug dealers objection assumes a fact not in evidence your honor sustained isn't it true that the police contacted you several times regarding drug activities on your property yes do you remember what happened on October 15th no 
Wasn't that the day that Jesse Abadia came to your office and begged you to do something about the drug dealings? I do not remember. And didn't you ask your secretary to call the police to have Mr. Abadia arrested for trespassing? Well, if people break the law, let the police handle it. So you felt you had no responsibility as to what goes on on your property? Objection. I did nothing wrong. He destroyed my property. And you destroy lives. Objection. Argumentative. Sustained. How dare you talk to me like I did something wrong? Oh, forgive me, Mr. Christian. I didn't mean to suggest even for a moment that you were anything less than a pillar of the community. I have no further questions. Officer Baker, after Mr. Abadia waived his rights and agreed to talk to you without an attorney, did he confess to burning the house down? Yes, ma'am, he did. Thank you, officer. No further questions. You work in the South Central Division, officer? That's right. Could you tell us, please, what a code two is? A high priority call. Meaning? Something's going down, get there fast. What, within a few minutes? Yes, ma'am. Now, Mr. Abadi's calls were considered code two. Is that right? Yes. And yet it took an hour to respond to Mr. Abadi's desperate request for help? Our average response time is under four minutes. In Mr. Abadi's neighborhood? Uh, objection, Your Honor. No foundation. Sustained. You're familiar with the police commission reports on response times, officer? Yes, I am. But believe me, Mr. Abadia is an isolated No, it's not. Yes. I called, and you never showed up. We all called. It's not safe anymore. Oh, calm. They're afraid. That's enough. We don't have enough men for all the calls we get. What the hell do I pay taxes for? Those bastards don't take care of us. Why don't you arrest somebody? What for? We bust them, and the lawyers no, put them back on the streets. The We're doing the best. Sit down, or I'll clear this courtroom. Sit down. No further questions, Your Honor. Is that gone forever, that sense of community? Have we abdicated all our power to the city, the state, to the government? And what if that power is unresponsive to our repeated requests for help? What does that do to us? Where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? Where did it leave Mr. Abadia that night when he came home and found his son had been shot? How about uh, wounded? Wounded? Yeah. Oh, shot stronger. He shot him. Yeah, OK. Oh, you're going uh, to have Mr. Abadia's kid in court for your summation? He bet. He's still wearing his bandages? He will be. Perfect. Was Jesse Abadia frustrated? Wouldn't you be? Hell yes. Was he pushed by circumstances to the limits of his patience? Damn right. Would you have acted any differently if you looked out your window and saw a man with a firebomb and saw that man throw it at your house? Then you look into your heart and say you would have tried everything he did before you took the only option left and responded with equal force to protect your life and the lives of your children? That's good, that's good. But I think you should remind the jury of what he did. List it, they've forgotten by now. Hmm. Very good. I'm not asking you to forget what Jesse Abadia did that night. I'm asking you to remember it. I am asking you to think about a father who feared for the lives of his two children. A man who reacted with justifiable passion when they were threatened. Jesse Abadia is a decent, hardworking man who was driven by despair to defend his family and his neighborhood because county and city agencies refused to respond when he repeatedly approached them for help. There's only one question that you must finally answer. Did Jesse Abadia do what any reasonable person would have done when given the circumstances that he faced that night? Ladies and gentlemen, as you retire now to deliberate that question, remember, you have more power than the judge. You have more power than the prosecutor. You have more power than the police. You have the power to decide what is right. You have the opportunity to see that justice is done. Do it. Thank you.
There you are. The jury's coming in. Thank you. Mm. You've only deliberated five hours, and yet, by your note, you're telling me that you're hopelessly deadlocked. Six to six. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. And I have no choice but to declare a mistrial. The jury will please return to the jury assembly room. Thank you. So it's over? Almost. Your Honor, may we approach the bench? Your Honor, I'd like to ask the court to release my client on his own recognizance. Counselor? I have no objection, Your Honor. In fact, the people have no intention of retrying this case. Your Honor, I move for dismissal. This case is dismissed. The defendant is free to go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Carousel. What? You want to know what my problem is? Carousel. You have got to be kidding. The role of Julie Jordan belonged to me. You knew that, but you just had to audition anyway. Come on, Vicky. Don't you think this is getting a little ridiculous? Mrs. Van Voy gave the part to you because she didn't like my attitude. But I was the one who should have played that role. I practiced for weeks. I memorized the album. I sounded exactly like Shirley Jones. Well, I looked like Shirley Jones. I never thought they'd give it to me. Anyway, you did have a bad attitude, Vicky. Well, you were stuck up and you acted like you owned the place. Since when is that a good reason to give a neophyte a great role? It wrecked the whole show. Well, I beg your pardon. I thought I did pretty well considering Billy Bigelow was played by Valerie Hunsacker. You had everything. You were president of everything you wanted to be president of. You were invited into all their lousy clubs and groups. All I wanted was to sing If I Loved You. For God's sake, Vicky, you're on Broadway. What more do you want? I want you to know you took away the only thing that mattered to me in high school. Well, I'm sorry. I guess I didn't look at it like that. Then I asked Ricky Tigerman to the prom. Oh, forget him. He was a crummy dancer. You're telling me. <laughs> Well, did you feel any better after they panned my performance in the high school paper? Let me just say that in times of personal adversity, I have taken particular solace in that review. Quote, Rosie O'Neill is a triple threat on stage. Can't sing, can't dance, can't act. Unquote. What did you do, have it laminated? <laughs> Getting old, Rosie. I'd like to go on believing that life is still full of possibilities. Victoria, I think that life is always full of possibilities. That's the one thing they can't take away from us. I used to believe that until my last husband left me for a tenor. My left me for a 25 year old receptionist who likes to redecorate. <laughs> I don't feel fearless anymore. I mean, what have I got to look forward to? Voiceovers and showing up at awards banquets, turning into one of those aging actresses that everybody knows and nobody hires. You at least have a future. You've got those little letters after your name that mean something in the real world. But your name's up in lights on Broadway and you have a Tony on your mantle. That means something too. Until the applause stops. Vicki, you and I are survivors. We've lasted this long. We're gonna make it. <laughs> Ever the optimist. Excuse me, Miss Lindman. If we don't leave now, you're going to be late for the theater.
I don't know why the hell I kept this. Victoria Lindman, 1964. It's a collector's item. I gotta go. Hey, Victoria. Break the leg. Thanks, Lumpy. <laughs> you know, darling, life is a banquet. And most poor suckers are starving to death. Bon appetit. <laughs> Rosalind Russell, Auntie Mame, 1958. Give me a break.